future? Uh, hello, all. Uh, name is Boris Jeremich, Professor QC Davis, uh, going through demos and showing how to run real easy and how to post process and pre-process these, these examples. Today, we're looking at examples that have to do with, uh, with solids and beams and shells. And Dr. Han Yang is uh, presenting these examples. So he just finished one recording uh, about how to run and the explanation of the example. Now he's going to show us some results. So Han, please uh, take it over and uh, share your screen. OK. OK, so OK, so now we're back for the uh, visualization part of this, this example. So um, again, maybe just briefly. So this is the model that we are we are uh, trying to trying to simulate. Uh, so this is the model. So now uh, we have already run the simulation. As you can see, we have all the output files and log files here. That means we finished the simulation. So now we're going to do post processing just to uh, show how the uh, model and the, the response of the sim the system. So we just so we're going to use uh, Paraview and our looking for that so just open Paraview. So this is the uh, window for Paraview. So first we just open uh, our output file so as you can see uh, we have three output files uh, corresponds to three different uh, stages of the simulation. The first one is the check model. Uh, in the check model basically we can open it and then we click on the apply to actually let the file inside. So now, as you can see, this is our model. Now, uh, in this check model stage, there's no load, so there won't be any uh, deformation or any force in that. But we can see how the model looks like. Um, so here, uh, we have a number of different options we can use to see the model. So in this one, we can just see the whole thing, but we don't see the discretization of the model. To see that we can change the surface to surface with edges. Now we see okay how the elements and nodes basically looks like in this model. And uh, as I mentioned in the, our previous video, so there's going to be uh, four types of elements in this model. Uh, at the bottom here, we have 400 uh, brick elements, the solid elements down here, and then uh, we have uh, 10 beam elements. Uh, note that the beam element actually goes inside. Uh, the solid. Now we cannot see it, but later I can show some options to actually see that. And then uh, we have the shell elements. Uh, the shell elements also goes inside. And between the beam and shell elements and the solid elements, there are the contact interface elements to simulate the interreaction between those two types of elements. Uh, we can also later show that. Okay. Um, so we want to check if so first uh, in this stage we're basically trying to see if the model is correctly built so to see if the thing the beam element is actually correctly inside the we can change the opacity of the element right uh, of the model here so here if i say now the opacity by default is one which is uh, completely uh, not transparent but we can change that to let's say 0 0.5 so now you can see uh, this uh, whole model is becoming a little bit transparent, so you can actually see, especially for the shell can, part. Can you change, can, uh, Han, can you change the thickness of beams and, and shell uh, lines so we can just see them more clearly inside? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I was going to talk about that actually. So now, uh, to make them more clear, we can see that change the line width, let's say to 10. But you see in here, Changing the line with you are actually changing the line with for the whole model oh, because oh. we are seeing the edges. So there is another way of doing that, a little bit more complicated, but I can show you right here. So because we only want to make the beam element thicker, so what we're gonna do first, we're gonna do this option. It's called threshold, and then threshold basically is uh, allows you to select a certain type of elements here. So we say the property we want to use is element class tag. So the class tag associated with the beam element is 89. So now and we how, say how, do, how do you know that? How, where is that documented? Oh, uh, yes. So all the element class tags are also available in our online menu. Okay. In, the, okay. in the post processing menu, uh, okay. I added Good. a section shows you the, the, this uh, class tags that you can, you can do the threshold. So now uh, 
Okay. So now as you can see, all the beam elements are selected out and then we just make the dot one sister. Okay, so now we push put back this one. So now you can see okay the beam elements inside the solid. So this uh there's a better representation uh, of things to play. Can, with. can you also show uh, like like Hashan did can you show boundary conditions, the fixities? Yes. So to yeah, to do that, uh okay, we go back to here. So here we can actually uh, use a color scheme to show the boundary conditions. So if we choose choose boundary conditions, we see that uh, in this model, uh, as we mentioned in our previous video, the only boundary condition is the fixed at the bottom of the solid. And uh, to choose different, because you have X, Y, and Z three directions, so just say U, X, we can see that uh, the boundary value goes from zero to one, so basically zero means free and one is fixed. So as you can see, this uh, red node at the bottom just tells you that uh, the bottom of the model is fixed. Uh, yeah, similarly, thanks. you see Y and Z, so basically fixed in all three directions. Great, thanks. So, so let's, let's, look at the, let's look at results of the first loading stage and then the second loading stage. Okay. Now we just, so next we open the uh, next loading stage, which is the uh, load. So and you say apply. Okay, so again, we have the same uh, model right here. And uh, for this loading stage, uh, again, as we mentioned in our previous video, we added some uh, loading in the X direction on top of the beam and on top of, of the shell here. So if we go to the end, of this loading stage, so uh, at this at this uh, the, at the end of the simulation, uh, the totality of the load are added. So we should be able to see some deformation and displacement. So now, uh, first, we want to use this option. It's a, a warp by a vector. So basically, this one can allows you to shape, and we want to warp the model using displacement. Let's say we are exaggerating 100 times. Because essentially all the simulation will be small deformation, so we always need to scale up to see the actual deformed shape. So you see that uh, compared to before, <coughs> uh, the basically the model is deformed, and we can actually using a color to show the displacement. Again, let's say for example we want to see the x direction. So uh, this one basically is showing you the deformed shape of the element and. Uh, color it shows you the, the amount of displacement. So obviously because the load is applied on the top of the beam and the shell, so those are the places with the largest displacement. We can actually also compare the deformed shape with the original shape. So if we just click this one again, and this is a little bit hard to see, so I'm just gonna make this one kind of uh, transparent. So now you can see that uh, the amount of displacement or deformation happen once you apply those loads compared with the original shape. Uh, we can also, because we have 10 different loading stages, so if we go back to the beginning where load is not there, then we just click on next frame, next frame, and frame. You can see the load are added uh, incrementally to the model along, uh, as the loading stage goes on. We can actually show this as some kind of animation if we just click in the middle, so it will play as animation. Uh, there are options in Paraview to save it as a screenshot or as an animation so that later you can uh, show your result with uh, other people. Uh, this is the uh, loading stage right here. We have a number of other things we can show here. Okay, first of all, uh, one thing we can show for the solid element is actually uh, we are also we are saving the stress and strain information here so let me maybe show that part okay so again uh because stress and strain is only available for the uh for the solid elements so first we need to select all the solid elements again we are using threshold element class tag so the solid element their class tag is two so i apply so now all the solid elements are selected out. And uh, go back to the original file, we have a few options that we built inside the visualization options. Uh, we say 
uh, uh, where is that? Ah, here. So Gauss mesh visualization. So if we click on that, show Gauss mesh, we are gonna see the all the Gauss points for the solid bricks. Because remember, people in uh, for solids, all the all the computations of of uh, stress integrations and uh, the, and and the stress results and strain results are essentially at Gauss points. Uh, yes. Uh, hold on. Why? Is, no, I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here it is. So uh, here you can you can see all the Gauss points are represented by those those nodes. Uh, yeah, I should change back the opacity. All right. Okay. So now you can see that. Okay. So. Yep. Yeah, no, no. I, I, I guess we'll have a, a, another session on how to actually visualize things in, in solid. Go back to the full mesh. Okay. Just show the the, the third the third uh, third loading stage or second one that, that uh, vibrations. Okay. Yeah, this is very useful, but I think we're gonna probably have to have multiple se sessions on using right. Fireview for some common tasks. Yes. So, okay. So, so let's. Go ahead. Okay. So let's just move on to the next loading stage which is the uh, free vibration. So we just open that. Uh, so, okay, so again, we have the same model. Uh, uh, we wanna warp it to see the deformation of that free vibration. We're gonna exaggerate 100 times. All right, so you see that at the beginning of this stage, uh, no, at the begin, okay. This is the beginning of the stage at uh, time zero. So, that, so that's the this would be. The, of, so, if I may interrupt for a second, this is the beginning of stage two, the, the free vibration stage, but that's the end of stage one. That was the previous one, which had the static pushover on top uh, top nodes of this beam and of this shell. And so, you, we deform this beam and shell, and then now, now Han is going to release those loads, and then those are going to oscillate back and forth uh, toward the grid. Yes, uh, exactly. So if we just show the displacement in the x direction. So this is the uh, uh, the beginning of this stage, or also the the, the end of the, the the last stage. So we just release the loads and let it free vibrate. So now you can see the system is basically uh, free vibrating. Uh, okay. So here is the option to keep the animation going. So as you can see, because the beam uh, and the shell part, they have different uh, natural frequencies. So they will oscillate uh, in, uh, within, uh, using, they will have a different uh, natural frequency for oscillation. So that's why the beam is oscillating faster than the shell right there. So you can see we have a hundred steps. So that allows you to, to see the oscillation a few uh, times back and forth, you can always change that to see more or less, or you can uh, make more, uh, you can change the time step to make it uh, shorter or longer. So all those options you can play with. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. So we'll stop here. Uh, we'll be back uh, with next session on, uh, on analyzing and post processing uh, components. And then we're also going to have some theoretical sessions. So thank you all. Uh, goodbye.